So, we're back, and uh, it's been actually a couple of days since I built this keyboard. Now, I know that things are a little bit out of sequence because I first reviewed these two Mastrop and KP Republic XD75 kits that you would have seen at the first part of this video, and then I did a live stream, a three hour live stream, where I actually built this KP Republic XD75 as well. And for those people who actually caught that live stream or have chosen to watch that, you pretty much know my thoughts and conclusions. But for those who didn't, because obviously it's a very long stream, um, this is a, a wrap up on that and a quick revisit of that keyboard just to attach it to the end of the actual review of the kits itself. So let's switch over to the desktop and have a look at what we've got here. So this is the KP Republic kit because we discovered that the mass drop kit was actually a hot swap kit. So there wasn't very much that you really had to do in it. And so I chose not to build it. Uh, or should I say after discussion with Mitenele, he had decided that there was really not much need. So here is the XD75 built with box jades, cap cracker box jades in the KP Republic version of that kit. Now the first thing that you might kind of notice in this although you probably won't because the, the focus isn't showing very well on these dark legends, on these dark keycaps, is that there's some unusual keycap arrangements in some of this, and the reason why I've had to do that is because the actual key set that was provided to me didn't cover every single keycap that was required for the default layout. Now, what that means is the blanks that are used randomly around here are actually meant to be for the spacebar settings in the middle here, but uh, because it doesn't actually have the arrow sort of, sorry, it does have the arrow default there and it's not using the numpad in the middle, which is what that one new key set looks like it was designed for, that's why there's some weird key assignments. So just ignore the key assignments on the modifiers, whereas the alphas in white are actually correct and true for most part. So what's been happening on this build is that it was a very frustrating build. It was a very frustrating build. I didn't have any build instructions. I've never built one of these KP Republic kits before. I've not built a 75 key ortho layout kit before either. And the real frustration came from the fact that the plate messed me up almost twice. And then the screw attachments to the case also messed me up quite a bit because I hadn't remembered that while I was putting it together, there was three packets of attachment hardware. There's three packets. Like, why? There's also this extra hardware in these, these nuts and these very weird different lengths of screws. The end result was that it was this middle packet that had the long screws that was required to get through the plate, through the PCB, into the mounts. I'm not going to pull up the keycaps to show you, but there's one here, one here, and one roughly over here. That was the resulting three mounts. The other holes that were actually present, because there was another three or four holes, I think there were seven holes in the plate, don't line up to the case mounting points underneath. Okay, so if you're going to get one of these kits from the KP Republic, that is the solid aluminium case and not the acrylic version, be aware that it is only three mounting points that screw in. The rest do not attach at all. And so don't get confused like I did because I was like, what, what was going on here? The screws I thought, because I hadn't found that long packet, I only had these short ones and the screws weren't making it all the way through. However, after I had discovered that these long screws did go through, I also encountered that I was getting double key shorting. So by pressing one of these keys, the P key in fact, pressing the P key was shorting out the colon, semicolon key underneath. And the reason for that is because when you tighten the PCB down with these three screws, the mount point that is underneath this P key is shorting the key below it as well. So I ended up taking it off again as part of that live stream and putting 
masking tape over the other remaining mounting points so that it wasn't going to cause that problem. Why do they have these other mounting points? I suspect they are standard 60% mounting points for non ortho 75 layouts. Okay, because this is the same size as a 60% keyboard and it probably fits a GH60 mounting point just by quick memory reference that you would have those mounting points in those places. And that would kind of make sense because it makes this case much, much more versatile in what they can offer to customers. So, so there you have it. Uh, look, it was very frustrating because I put in the switches the wrong side and I had to punch them all back out and then I had to put them back in and then I kind of nearly stuffed that up too because there was the, the opposite and up and down issue and before I started resoldering the second time after I put a couple of them in I double checked that I had them in the right way and finally I was confident enough to actually solder it in then I discovered the screw issues I fixed that then I discovered the salt the, the shorting issue here I fixed that and voila got the final build now have I tried typing on this no not really why have I not tried typing on this because I am not a massive sucker for punishment. Uh, <laughs> I had such a traumatic experience with this over the last three hours of building this that I really didn't want to experience that playing with this keyboard at that point in time. So it's got these uh, keycaps on them. They're, they're thick keycaps as I showed earlier. I feel like they're PBT, they're DSAs. They've got that texture about them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the microphone over the top and we'll do a bit of a typing sound sample for you just so you have an idea of what you may expect if you use box shades and DSA PBT keycaps in a KP Republic XD75. So that was a bit of a slower pace than my normal kind of hammering when I do do some sound samples only because I was actually trying to hit the, the letters I was looking for and because it's an ortho it completely throws me off. The, the spacings are completely out of whack for me and I don't know why my camera is not really focusing because it's not focusing on anything anywhere right now. Hey, come back. Right, it's got a focal plane about there. Bring it back. Bring it back. No? You don't you don't want to play ball? Okay. Well, you just just gonna have to uh Yeah, deal. There we go. Okay. So um I find ortho really hard because it, it's just the spacing is really challenging for me to get used to and, and the movements so you know this is a you can see straight away because I don't use my pinky to type I actually forefinger touch type uh, it throws me off massively similar problems to when I was using Ergodox. Sound wise I love it it sounds absolutely fantastic like it, it's got a great depth of sound to it and of course box jades feel great stock so overall, it's a really lovely sounding experience as long as you can type with an ortho format. Um, look, I've been told it was relatively cheap. So for, for what it is, um, it's worthwhile getting if you like the ortho format. The case, it's got a good amount of heft to it. I know it's absolutely solid. Like, <laughs> why am I even trying to twist it, right? Because it's an aluminium case. Uh, but that said, as long as you're aware of the pitfalls when you build it, you shouldn't have any problems with it whatsoever. I don't know what kind of software is used to drive it, if it's QMK 
or you need bootmapper or some other interface to actually reprogram its default layout. But um, yeah, it's it can be reset through shorting the pins in between there that you can see as well. So that's it. Um, I don't want to dwell too much further on this. This gets to go home to Mitenole. Thank you very much for uh, lending me both the kits and the Hako to build it with. And he actually did check out the stream afterwards and was like, I'm kind of glad that uh, I sent it to you to build because, well, I don't know. He probably would have actually built it better, faster, sooner, easier. Who knows? Who knows? All right, that's it. Wrap up time. Thank you very much for sticking through this entire video. I hope that if you do get one of these keyboards, you build it first go without any issues. Have a great time with it. Enjoy it and so on and so forth. So, as usual, until next time. Happy clacking.